Hello and welcome to all my dear students. So today we are going to start with the next lecture of the chapter Molecular Basis of Inheritance where we will be learning about regulation of gene expression and the concept of operon. So let's start with today's class. First you are going to see regulation of gene expression. Beta, so far you have seen that yes with the help of DNA you are obtaining RNA and that RNA is then utilized to obtain proteins, right? Now, are these genes, are these DNA always active? Are they responsible for producing proteins all the time, even if it is not required by the body? So, answer will be no. As in when the activity of gene is required, then only they are made to active, then only they are made to produce protein. Otherwise, those genes remain in silent mode and they do not produce protein. So, this is known as regulation of gene expression. The body cells, when required, they activate the gene and produce the protein. Whenever it is not required, then the genes are made to sleep and they are not allowed to produce protein. In case of eukaryotes beta, this regulation of gene expression, see, regulation of gene expression refers to a very broad term that may occur at various level. In case of eukaryote, in case of eukaryote during the whole process of protein synthesis, we can check the production of protein at four levels. Number one is a transcription level. That means when you are making RNA from DNA, at that time the process can be made to halt. Suppose if DNA is not converting itself into RNA, then how protein synthesis will take place? So the first level at which your DNA or protein synthesis can be halted is at transcription level. Second, suppose transcription happened, RNA is obtained. But in case of eukaryote, you know, the RNA soon obtained after transcription is heterogeneous. So, suppose we don't let that heterogeneous RNA to convert into proper RNA, again protein synthesis won't take place. So, at second level of gene expression is to stop the process of splicing. If splicing won't take place, then automatically heterogeneous RNA, even if it is produced in the nucleus, it cannot be utilized for protein synthesis. And yes, you will be successful in regulating the gene expression. Third, Suppose splicing also happened, okay, then don't let that homogeneous RNA to move out of the nucleus and come in the cytoplasm. Till the time the compartment won't be changed from nucleus to cytoplasm, again translation cannot take place. So this is the third place where regulation of gene expression can be done. Number one was at transcriptional level. Number two is at processing level, that means don't allow splicing. Number three is don't let the compartment get changed from the nucleus to the cytoplasm. And fourth is even if this happens, then don't let translation begin. So their transcription process or oh sorry, the regulation of gene expression in case of eukaryote can be done at four level. Number one is don't allow transcription or don't allow splicing or don't allow the movement of RNA from nucleus to cytoplasm or don't allow translation to begin. Correct? So these are the four places of gene regulation. Now this is very, very important. Why it is very, very important? It is important because beta, if suppose genes are not regulated and if genes are made to function all the time then excess protein will be synthesized which can again be a big trouble protein as and when required should be synthesized and also in right quantity neither less nor more lesser quantity of protein higher quantity of protein than requirement is always a trouble that is why regulation of gene expression is very, very important. One such concept was explained by Jacob Monard while working on E. coli. These two people have explained the concept of operon that, that prevails in prokaryotic organism for controlling the gene regulation. But in case of you prokaryote, gene regulation can only be done at transcriptional level. Why? Because once in them transcription starts, 
you know the both the process transcription and translation are coupled and then then, then there is no change in the compartment there is no splicing so like in case of eukaryote you have seen four levels of gene regulation but in case of prokaryote regulation of gene can only be done at transcriptional level if suppose a prokaryotic cell does not want a protein then the dna should not start the transcription because if once the transcription will start translation will take place protein will be synthesized so concept of gene regulation in case of e coli explained by jacob and bonard is known as operon these two people explained the lactose metabolism controlled by three set of genes in case of prokaryote you know prokaryotic gene transcriptional unit are polycystronic that means there will be one promoter one regulator and in between them number of genes producing number of polypeptide so many polypeptide can be produced from the same transcription unit hence in case of prokaryote it is polycystronic nature so now let's try to understand what is concept of operon Jacob and Monard proposed a model of gene regulation known as operon model in bacteria now what do you mean by operon beta how will you define this operon operon means beta set of genes set of genes located on dna which are working in a regulated manner as and when required those genes will work as and when not required those genes will not be made to work so how will you define operon operon is a coordinated group of genes that functions in a regulated manner correct so let's write the definition portion operon represents a set of genes beta that functions in a regulated manner now those set of genes are operator gene regulator also known as inhibitor gene then promoter gene and structural gene now structural gene number will vary depending upon metabolism to metabolism so here we are studying lac operon here we are going to see the metabolism of lactose and e coli in bacteria that is regulated by three structural genes which is lac z lac y and lac a sabse pehle what do you mean by operator gene chalo beta regulator gene is the gene which is first of all represented by symbol i right why because it is a constitutive gene which is not under any control beta some genes are constitutive some genes are labor genes which are going to function all the time matlab they cannot be controlled by any metabolism so under that example regulatory gene is one of the gene whose function cannot be controlled so regulator genes are those genes which consistently synthesizes their protein and that protein if when synthesized will go and bind to the operator to stop the process of transcription or translation so regulator inhibitory proteins are the genes which continuously works which continuously works and are not regulated and they are not under any regulation next is promoter now promoter gene on dna represents the place where rna polymerase has to bind you know promoter region is the five prime end of the uh, 
code coding strand and it consists of some recognition sequences where rna polymerase has to bind so that means promoter gene represents the location for the binding of binding of the enzyme rna polymerase correct next now what is your promoter uh, sorry what is your operator operator is the place which actually allows the binding of the protein synthesized by inhibitor gene now suppose if inhibitor gene protein attaches with the operator then structural gene won't transcribe suppose if operator gene is free of the protein synthesized by the inhibitor gene then the transcription of structural gene will take place so basically operator gene represents the location it represents the location of binding for the product of inhibitory gene for the product of inhibitory gene now talking about the structural gene these are the most important genes whose transcription has to be done that is going to regulate the lactose production and breakdown so structural gene are the most important part in case of lac operon there are three structural gene lac z which is responsible for the synthesis of the enzyme beta galactosidase then lac y which is responsible for the synthesis of the enzyme permease and lac a which is responsible for the synthesis of the enzyme trans acetylase right now lac z enzyme which is beta galactosidase it is responsible for the breakdown of the sugar lactose into glucose and galactose right lac y product which is permease it increases the permeability of the lactose sugar inside the e coli it increases the permeability of lactose inside the e coli then coming your lac a lac a trans acetylase has no direct association with the lac operon but yes it is simply said that it increases the efficiency of the enzyme beta galactosidase by adding methyl group to it so trans means transfer acetyl matlab methyl group a is matlab enzyme so it is responsible for transferring acetyl group to your enzyme beta galactosidase so this transfers acetyl group to the enzyme beta galactosidase right now let's try to see the diagrammatic representation okay now let me just first add a page and then we'll check out the diagrammatic representation of lac operon so basically it is it is a polycystronic okay this is the dna which i have made having promoter gene inhibitor gene followed by wait wait yes inhibitor gene promoter gene operator gene and three structural gene that is z y a so this is whole dna which is represented by group of gene and yes these set of genes is known as operon which is going to control the lactose metabolism now what is this lactose metabolism first try to understand that see if i want to check the lactose metabolism e coli beta 
सी लैक्टोज इज अ डायसाइक्राइड विच इज मेड अप ऑफ टू शुगर ग्लूकोज एंड गैलेक्टोज सपोज इफ द इकोलाइज सेल इज हैविंग लेस अमाउंट ऑफ शुगर लेस अमाउंट ऑफ ग्लूकोज देन ग्लूकोज इज द मेन सबस्ट्रेट फॉर एनर्जी प्रोडक्शन right now suppose if e coli is lacking glucose then automatically the amount of atp requirement will also decrease so e coli will need more glucose so that it can be broken down for producing new energy and then e coli can live happily so what happens when glucose concentration in the cell decreases that means now there there is more demand of lactose from the medium right there's more demand of lactose so that lactose can come inside the e coli then with the help of the enzyme beta galactosidase that lactose could be broken down so that it can produce glucose and galactose and again the requirement can be fulfilled now when glucose is in excess then the inhibitor gene binds to the operator stops the transcription of these three structural gene no more synthesis of beta galactosidase no more breakdown of lactose and hence everything is under control so when glucose level falls down inside the e coli lactose move inside performs the function if glucose concentration is already high in the e coli lactose does not move inside the e coli everything is balanced so this regulation of gene these three structural gene whether they will function or not depends upon the need of energy depends upon the need of glucose by the prokaryotic cell e coli now what happens beta in this case normally under normal condition this i gene i told you is the regulator gene which is not under any control which is not under any regulation so it is going to continuously synthesize it is continuously going to undergo transcription it is going to produce it produce its mrna and thus will produce the protein this protein is going to be the beta inhibitor protein now since inhibitor protein is getting continuously being synthesized inhibitor protein also you can call it as repressor protein inhibitor or repressor protein now this repressor protein is being continuously being synthesized nobody is there inside the e coli to control it so this repressor protein will directly go and bind with the operator so it will directly go and bind with the operator now if repressor protein goes and directly binds with the operator so now the enzyme rna polymerase will not be able to bind with the promoter now if enzyme rna polymerase will not bind with the promoter on the transcription unit that means no transcription of the structural gene will take place no transcription no translation no protein no enzyme so no transcription this is known as switched off mode of lac operon this is what mode this is switched off mode that means the structural genes are not performing the function that means the e coli is rich in glucose it does not want any new glucose to move inside now suppose e coli is having less glucose so what will happen the little bit amount of permease is there lac y was synthesizing the enzyme permease little bit permease is there inside the e coli when required with the help of that permease from the medium e coli will pick up the lactose so as and when required initially when there was no requirement lactose was not coming inside the e coli repressor was binding with the operator as a result rna polymerase failed to bind with the promoter so no transcription now when requirement of glucose is there inside the e coli the already present permease enzyme in the e coli will let the lactose from the medium come inside now this is this is going to continuously transcribe 
nobody can control inhibitor gene it is not under any regulation so this repressor protein will always be synthesized now if lactose is there inside e coli so that lactose which is brought inside the e coli with the help of the enzyme permease synthesized by lac y तो ये क्या करेगा नाउ दिस लैक्टोज विल गो एंड बाइंड विद द रिप्रेसर सो लैक्टोज इज एक्चुअली नोन एज एपो रिप्रेसर वाई सी वी कैन नॉट कंट्रोल द रेगुलेटर जीन बट वी कैन एक्चुअली स्टॉप द रिप्रेसर प्रोटीन टू गो एंड बाइंड विद द ऑपरेटर सो लैक्टोज कम्स it acts as a apo repressor it does not allow it binds with the repressor and make it inactive as a result it does not go and bind with the operator operator is free so rna polymerase very easily comes and binds with the promoter and let the transcription of all the three structural gene takes place later on they undergo translation to produce polypeptide chains so how many polypeptide chain are being produced more than one from one operon so this is this condition is known as polycystronic many polypeptide chains are being produced so prokaryote they are polycystronic in nature later on z will produce beta galactosidase y will produce permease a will produce trans acetylase now this is known as switched on mode why because transcription has started and how transcription got started due to the incoming of lactose so this lactose itself induces the production of the enzyme so lac operon is known as inducible operon lac operon is known as beta inducible operon and what is the reason behind it why is it known so why is it called as like that lac operon is an inducible operon because lactose controls the production of enzymes now what will happen when beta galactosidase will be produced it will start the break breakdown of lactose into glucose and galactose right now a time will come when lactose concentration will fall and glucose concentration will rise up so again what will happen all the lactose which is there in the medium will be broken down with the help of the enzyme so lactose will become less in the less in the e coli again repressor will become active again it will go and bind stop the production so like this now glucose is there e coli is happy it does not want for the production so inactive protein will become active stop the process again glucose concentration will fall permease will go and let lactose more come inside when lactose will come inside again it will make the active protein inactive again the process will start so this is how the operon this is how group of genes are working together in regulated manner to regulate a special metabolic pathway in the cell right i hope you all have understood beta so this is there in your syllabus hope you all got the concepts which we have done today it was a very simple and crisp class try to read it from your ncert try to make your own notes with the help of the lecture given to you on lac operon and regulation of gene expression this is there in your syllabus make sure you do it properly in the next class we will study about human genome project till then thank you see you in the next class bye bye everyone take care